Good morning. Author Audre Lorde says, it is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept and celebrate those differences. Good morning, my name is Linda Williams Moore and I'm honored to serve as the Associate Dean of Students and Director of Student Life at the University of Pittsburgh within the Division of Student Affairs. For just a few moments this morning, I wanna share with you some thoughts on a topic that is very important for us here at the University of Pittsburgh, and that is around the issue of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We thank you for joining us this morning for this important topic. Part of our PIT promise says that you would support a culture of diversity by respecting the rights of those who differ from you. And in over, and it, and in the next, over the next 90 minutes, you will hear from individuals about the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion here on our campus. Let me begin by saying we are excited that your families have chose to share you with us during this journey in your life. And we recognize and honor that each one of you come with your own set of values and unique personalities. And we want you to know that we celebrate that uniqueness. Our hope is that you will join us in celebrating and respecting all those around you as well, and that you will assist us in creating a community where individuals are valued, respected, and not harmed a place where respect and dignity for others is the very essence of who we are striving to be. The late author Stephen Covey says that we should, ask, we should first seek to understand, then to be understood. We understand that we may not always agree, but let us disagree without doing one another harm. When I was a child, we were, we were taught that sticks and stone may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Well, I think we can all agree we were giving misinformation. The fact of the matter is words do hurt and they can hurt, but, it is, it, but if words are used appropriately, they have the ability to transform, build up and inspire. I know it will be easy and comfortable for you all to, to operate and connect in your like communities, in your like pods at this point, 
whether it be by race, gender, religion, physical ability, sexual identity, or ethnicity. And that's okay. And we encourage you to found, find those communities where you are comfortable. But we also would like to invite you and challenge you to try to get to know communities that you may not be familiar with. Try to enter into spaces and have conversations with individuals who you may not be familiar with. We invite you to do that also. We invite you to cross over boundaries and reach across the line. It will also be very easy, even in this virtual community, to judge people by what, by, by what you see and not by actually getting to know them. You will look at a picture or you will enter into a space and you will begin to judge those individuals without even having a conversation. But I invite you to, to consider thinking about before you judge them, asking them some questions. For instance, you can look at me on this video and you can make all kinds of assumptions about me. You will make assumptions that I, that I identify as she, her, and hers, and you will be correct. You could make the assumption that I work at the University of Pittsburgh and you would be correct. But did you also know that I'm a mom? Did you also know that I'm a grandmom? Did you also know that I'm a full-time pastor? Did you also know that I lived in Iowa? Did you also know that I love TikTok and I almost have the go crazy challenge master? I bet you didn't know that. See, one of the things I often share with our students is how they have the opportunity to have a rich cultural experience right here at the University of Pittsburgh without ever leaving our campus. By visiting student organizations, perhaps different from their own culture or attending a program around a topic that you may not be familiar with. Our, our hope here at the University of Pittsburgh is that you will make the most of these opportunities. We want the community in the world to know that we stand together, especially during the times that we are going through at this current moment. When you discriminate against one of us, you discriminate against all of us. When one of our community members experience an injustice, we all are affected by that injustice. In other words, if, the if it affects one member of our community, it ultimately affects us all. One of my heroes, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. says, it is not possible to be in favor of justice for some people and not be in favor of justice for all people. We have some dynamic speakers this morning, and I'm so excited that you have joined, chosen to join us. I encourage you to relax and engage in the program, step outside of your comfort zone and try to challenge yourself to do something different. Our hope is that you will not miss this opportunity. Thank you so very much and hail to Pitt. It is my honor this morning to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker this morning will be our provost, Dr. Ann Cudd. Dr. Cudd is the University's Pittsburgh Provost and Senior Vice Chancellor. Appointed in September, 2018, she, is the, she has primary responsibility for all aspects of the University of Pittsburgh's academic mission. Her duties include supporting scholarly excellence among more than 4,600 full-time faculty members and student success among the university's nearly 35,000 undergraduate and professional students on all five campuses. Dr. Cutt previously served as a provost as Boston University's Dean of the College of Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, which is the institution's largest college. Prior to joining Boston University in 2015, she also served 25 years at the University of Kansas, where she earned the title as a University Distinguished Professor of Philosophy. At the University of Kansas, Dr. Cutt held various positions an increasing responsibility culminating in the position of vice provost and dean of undergraduate studies and in inaugural role at that university. Dr. Cutt is an accomplished teacher and scholar who research explores themes of oppression, economic inequality, capitalism, and gender. Her philosophical interests, the focus of more than 50 books, articles, and chapters published under her name spans social and political philosophy, philosophy of economics, decision theory, and feminist theory. She holds her doctorate in philosophy and two master's degrees. It is my honor this morning to introduce to you the provost of the University of Pittsburgh, Dr. Ann Cudd. Thank you, Linda. And I wanna warmly welcome everyone here today and especially each member of the class of 2024. 
Every year I look forward immensely to this particular event. It is unlike any other because it feels to me as though by the end of it, with Dr. Jamie Washington's incredible guidance and the fantastic abilities of every student here, the feeling of community is really palpable. And your class is in fact making history already, not only because you're beginning your pit journey during a pandemic, but because you are coming to a campus, the campus at a time when the university has fully committed to redoubling its efforts to social justice, inclusion, diversity, and equity. The University of Pittsburgh must capitalize on this moment, I believe, and we must take actions that will change Pitt for the better now and forever. Among many other powerful actions we will be taking in the weeks, months, and years ahead, we are determined to make our curriculum more engaged and inclusive. You will have, for instance, the outstanding opportunity to be the first class to take a newly developed course called Anti-Black Racism, History, Ideology, and Resistance. There will be more information to come about that, but one thing I know is that a community, every community, is best built when we recognize the important work that needs to be done to ensure equity and understand that each of us has a role and a responsibility in that process. And now I am delighted to introduce our Vice Provost and Dean of Students, Dr. Kenyon Bonner. He joined the Division of Student Affairs in 2003 and plays a pivotal role in helping the university achieve one of its fundamental goals, educating the whole student through a variety of programs and services offered by the Division of Student Affairs. Among the various areas under Dean Bonner's purview are student life, residence life, the University Counseling Center, the Student Health Service, Student Conduct, Career Development and Placement Assistance, the Outside the Classroom Curriculum, Disability Resources and Services, Campus re Recreation, Cross-Cultural and Leadership Development, Pitt Serves, and Pitt Arts. In his role, he also serves as a liaison to the Board of Trustees, to the, their Student Affairs Committee, He's a member of the Council of Deans, the University Senate Council, and the Undergraduate Education Task Force, and as co-chair of the Enrollment Management Committee. Dr. Bonner earned his EDD in Higher Education Manager, Management at the University of Pennsylvania, his Master's in Education in Rehabilitation Counseling at Kent State University, and his BA in Psychology and Philosophy at Washington and Jefferson College. He's also the recipient of Washington and Jefferson College's Walter Storff Award for Innovative Leadership and the University of Pittsburgh's Chancellor's Award for Staff Excellence in Service to the University. And now I give you Dean Bonner. Thank you, Provost Cutt. Uh, good morning, class of 2024. Um, it's truly an honor to participate in today's Building a Pit Community Program. Uh, this is one of my favorite programs for Welcome Week, so I'm excited to be here this morning. Um, before I get started, though, I want to first thank uh, Provost Cudd and Linda Williams-Moore and the entire Welcome Week staff, Breanne Donahue and Mike Dolinger especially, for making this event possible. And of course, thanks to Dr. Washington for joining us today to share his expertise, his insight, and enthusiasm. Before I hand things over to him, I want to take a moment to say a few words to you, the incoming class of 2024. As you embark on your college journey, I want to acknowledge that the world around us will help shape our coming year, sometimes in good ways, but also, as we all know, in challenging ways. Currently, we're grapp grappling not just with a global pandemic, but also with a more polarized country, a divisive public rhetoric, the rise of nationalism globally, and an increasingly tense racial climate, both here and abroad. This summer, racism, another insidious virus, and police violence instigated by racism reminded our country that its history is very much a part of its present. Even here at Pitt, our Black students and allies courageously demanded that Pitt live up to our commitment to help every student feel like they belong and they matter. On top of all of that, we're heading into a presidential election this fall that will challenge us to remain civil participants in the public discourse. Yet in the face of it all, 
there is hope. Now, hope is the unequivocal force that compels the noblest of us to stand firm in optimism, despite the naysayers and pessimists. Tomorrow, you'll learn about our pit promise, which asks each of you to affirm that you will embrace the concept of a civil community that abhors violence and the exploitation of others, support a culture of diversity and inclusion by respecting the rights of those who differ from yourself, and contribute to a caring community where compassion for others and freedom of thought and expression are valued. Finally, and this is probably one of my favorite parts of the PIP promise, you will commit to work to leave this a better place for those who follow. The PIP promise is a powerful commitment to civility. Even more impressive is the strength, courage, and humility required to live by those principles and be kind to others. At this very moment, you can decide to enter the next phase of your life with open curiosity rather than suffocating and closed-mindedness. I've always chosen curiosity, the desire to know or learn about something new. Being curious and learning about something new does not require you to agree with or adopt the something new. In some cases, the act of stepping outside of your comfort zone broadens your understanding of the world and yourself, and it could set you on a new course. If you're anything like me, I entered college holding on to beliefs that I've thoughts, beliefs and thoughts I had learned throughout my young, unexamined life. College was really my opportunity to, to interrogate my personal beliefs, which were mostly benevolent, broaden my perspectives, which were mostly reasonable, and challenge my prejudices, which were mostly ill-informed. I'm not quite sure I would have had a better opportunity to evolve in my thinking and beliefs than college. So here you are at Pitt. What decision will you make? Pitt, like any institution of higher learning, is a marketplace of ideas, even ideas at times that conflict with our own beliefs. In fact, we welcome such diversity of thought and perspective because we know we cannot learn and we certainly cannot grow if we listen only to peoples whose viewpoints reflect our own. The marketplace of ideas is not without its challenges or tensions. In fact, balancing the rights of free speech, civil discourse and contentious issues and a campus climate where everyone feels a sense of belonging is difficult. This is not easy work. If it were easy, the world and our country would be a different place, a place with less violence, war, hatred, racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, and oppression. Despite the difficulty, it's necessary and worthwhile work to aspire to be a diverse, equitable, and inclusive community, seeking to realize a more just and peaceful society. I would argue that an academic institution cannot flourish and maximize its limitless potential unless it operates in a diverse, equitable, and inclusive ecosystem. And that ecosystem can only be cultivated through intentional on your part. Some people assume that as long as hateful words are not directed at a specific person or said with malicious intent, then the words are harmless. But we know that's not true. Question, is an arrow launched aimlessly into a public square filled with people any less harmful than one launched aimlessly with malicious intent? Thoughtless and careless speech can be just as harmful as malicious speech. So consider your words and be considerate of your audience. My charge to you, class of 2024, and to every member of our university community is to make a choice, a constructive choice, as to how you will approach unfamiliar people, viewpoints, opinions, beliefs, and perspectives. How will you speak? How will you act? Will you seek to understand other people's point of view or will you hold relentlessly to your unexamined convictions? How will you relate to others with courage, openness, and kindness? Dr. Brene Brown, a researcher at the University of Houston who studies courage, vulnerability, and empathy, has a suggestion for how we can meet the challenges posed by living together in a diverse and inclusive community. And it's pretty simple. Listen to our stories. As she says, everyone has a story that will break your heart. And if you're really paying attention, most people have a story that will bring you to your knees. So class of 2024, tell your stories, listen to other people's stories, be curious and be kind. Thank you, mask up, 
and welcome to Panther Nation. Now at this time, it's my privilege to introduce today's facilitator, Reverend Dr. Jamie Washington. Dr. Washington is the president and founder of the Washington Consulting Group. In October 2015, the Washington Consulting, Consulting Group was named by The Economist as one of the top 10 global diversity consultants in the world. Dr. Washington, who has served as an educator, administrator, and consultant in higher education for over 33 years. He is also the president and co-founder of the Social Justice Training Institute. Jamie Washington is invested in working with colleges and universities to build capacity for greater inclusion. He works with campus leaders, staff, faculty, and students to create a culture that values, respects, and includes all of its members while helping campuses to address the historical and residual impacts of exclusion. Leadership, change management, and social justice issues are at the core of his work. He has received many honors and awards. Most recently, he was honored with the University of Maryland Baltimore County's Legends of Excellence Award for his contributions to the lives and education of Black and Latinx faculty, staff, and students. He is a member of Omicron Delta Kappa, Golden Key, Alpha Phi Omega, Phi Delta Kappa, and a life member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Dr. Washington earned his BS degree from Slippery Rock State College, double masters of science degrees from Indiana University Bloomington, a PhD in college student development from the University of Maryland College Park, and a Master's of Divinity from Howard University School of Divinity. He serves as the pastor of Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore and is the grandfather of seven and great uncle to seven. He lives by the words of one of his favorite songs, a song by the great Mahalia Jackson. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody that he, she, Z, or they are traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jamie Washington. Oh, hello, 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 hello. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Bonner. It was, it is indeed a pleasure to be with you all here today. This is uh, the first time in a number of years that I haven't actually been able to be on the Pitt campus for the beginning of our year building uh, a Pitt community. So I'm so excited to be with you, class of 2024. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me back at Pitt. We are together today and our commitment is to building a Pitt community. We're gonna move through this experience today. And as was already named, uh, this experience is one that's intended for you to help you in your transition to the space and to help you to begin to think about what it means to be in a pit community. And so I'm excited for the opportunity and we will be together today, not just me talking to you or talking at you, but also we're going to um, use some uh, experiences so that we can be engaged in this space together. I wanna to start though, um, this, this wonderful opportunity with the land acknowledgement. And so I would like to acknowledge the land that I am joining you from today is the original homeland of the Piscataway Tribal Nations. I acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory. And I honor and respect the many indigenous peoples still connected to this land on which I reside. Without them, we would not be able to have access to this gathering and this engagement today. I take this opportunity to thank the original caretakers of this land. If you would please just join me in a moment of breathing in the original caretakers of the land, wherever you're zooming in from, wherever you're joining us from. So whether you're in our YouTube, whether you're actually um, on the Zoom live platform webinar with us, wherever you are, just take a moment and consider the original homelands of the folks that you are um, zooming, where you are zooming in. I also invite you to think about your own ancestors and ancestry and what it means to stand on the shoulders of those who went before you, those who you knew and those who you didn't know, those who showed up in ways that you felt good about and those who didn't, those who came to these shores voluntarily and those who did not come voluntarily. 
we know that all of us have an opportunity during our journeys to leave the world, as Dr. Bonner said, better than we found it. And so my hope is that you get to take this moment as you start your college experience differently than any of us have ever um, in uh, this, uh, uh, this US differently than we've started. Take this opportunity to really think about the shoulders that you stand on and the legacy that you will leave. We honor the land this morning. With that named, I wanna talk about for a moment how we're going to be engaged. So I'm gonna invite you, if you would, um, if you have your devices, can get devices, um, go. You can use the chat to offer comments and or questions and we will try to keep our eyes on those things. And while we may not be able to answer all of them during this experience, we really do invite you to um, put your things in the chat so that we can uh, make sure as we do our continued follow-up conversations, we can uh, connect with you. I am gonna invite you to log into Poll Everywhere. So it's P-O-L-L-E-V dot com backslash Jamie Washington, I'm sorry, Jamie Washing 110. All right, that is if you need to join us from the web. But you can also text, and that's what I would invite most folks to do if you're um, not trying to do too many things um, or with, the, with your phone. Text 37607, the number, and text to that number, Jamie Washing 110. So you're texting 37607, and you're texting to that. Jamie Washing 110. That will get you signed on so you can participate in this engaged experience with us this morning. All right, so I'm going to do a test run and see if you all have been able to do that, right? And so the next, I'm going to launch several different uh, poll opportunities and we'll talk about it, but let's see how we did in the first one. Let's see if we got this. It'll take a moment to load, but then you get to just kind of respond. So let's see what we got. Let's see, this is, these are just practices. Let's see if we got people who have been able to sign in. Okay, oh, look, we got it, it's coming in, it's coming in. High school colors, high school colors, high school colors, yes. High school colors, excellent, excellent. We're seeing, yes, we're seeing some colors come in. We're seeing some colors come in. Very good, very good, very good. Testing, good, good, good test, good testing. We're gonna give you another 10 seconds just to get, see that we've got it all going. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we got a lot of blue and a lot of gold and some black and white in there. Excellent. All right. I'm going to do, uh, move us to our next one. Let's see what we got here. The next one is favorite summer food. What was your favorite summer food? So what's some of our favorite summer food? I, I like, I see there that some folks may have, um, uh, not, were not able to get into the, uh, poll, but you can go ahead and jump in on the chat. You can put it in either place, but yes. Okay. Bean. All right. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, watermelon, ice cream. <laughs> Very good. Crab fries. Never had crab fries. Excellent. Excellent. Great stuff. Oh, look at there. Look at there. I, but ice cream is winning. It's my favorite summer food as well. Very good. Very good. Excellent, excellent. All right, I'm going to keep us moving. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop the poll, stop the polling. Excellent, ice cream and watermelon are the winners. Ice cream and watermelon are the winners, excellent. I'm going to keep us moving and I would like to invite us to consider this next question. There's a lot going on for all of us right now and we are very, very clear, very, very clear that folks are feeling all kinds of things and are all over the place. Here's what I'd like you to do. I wanna give you a moment to just go ahead and respond to this poll. 
So as we're coming to this conversation around diversity, equity, and inclusion, what that means for us at Pitt, I want you to enter with this first question. I enter today feeling and thinking. I enter today feeling and thinking. We got some excited. What else are we entering? Uninformed, wow, very, thank you. Honesty, yeah. Nervous, anxious, yes. Very good, nervous, anxious, tired, some folks tired, yes. Yes, very good, thank you. Yes, overwhelmed. Go ahead, just, there's no wrong way to enter feeling. There's nothing, no wrong words here, nothing. Speak your truth, it's important. And, and notice folks, how many folks are entering similarly to you, entering similar to you, yep. Feeling, thinking, feeling, thinking, where am I? Tired, anxious, nervous, excited. The feelings of the community, where are we? Homesick already, eager, yes, we sing some of that. Overwhelmed, hopeful. Just pay attention to where you are and where others are as we start this experience this morning. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. Take a deep breath, folks. And I want to appreciate you just getting your voices in in this way. We are all in a new environment, a new way of being. And um, our intention is in this space to help you to begin to develop and to use your voice uh, but I want to walk through, I want to move through actually, what our intentions are for this experience today. And they are these. To explore what our own experiences have been with diversity and inclusion. Uh, what, what am I bringing? What did I come with before, as Dr. Bonner named? What are the markers of an inclusive and welcoming community? So how do I know that I'm in a space that's welcoming and inclusive? We want to consider our individual and collective responsibilities for creating a welcoming and inclusive um, anti-racist, right, uh, pit community. We're committed to that as provost named, we are doubling our efforts to focus on what that means. We are committed. And then to create an opportunity for us to share a little bit of ourselves and set the foundation for a strong community of inclusion and respect. So that's what we're intending to do with our time together today. We're gonna do that in a number of different ways. I'm gonna share a little bit of information. You're gonna to get to continue to be with us in this uh, kind of interactive polling and engagement space. And we ask that you just breathe in, as was already named at the beginning, that there may be some things that might get shared or stirred up during this. And certainly there is support for you at Pitt. If there's things, you, uh, people, you feel like you need some support and want to talk to some folks and we will make sure that that gets shared again at the end. So here's what's fun. Take a look at this picture. <laughs> See that face? That's my face. Yes, that was me. Uh, back in 1978. Wow. Some folks are like, wow, that's older than my grandparents. <laughs> well, I just want to say that all of the stuff that Dr. Bonner read about me, all that was named about him, all that was named about the provost, all that was named about all of your leadership, um, no, Dean Moore, all of it was named about us started from the very seats that you're sitting in. We all started just like you started. And um, as Dr. Bonner named that we talked that, that our lives were not examined, we weren't sure, we, we didn't know what we didn't know. Often what we thought we knew was based upon limited or missing or misinformation. And so we start just as you started. And this, we started at a place of opportunity and possibility. And that's where you are right now. Opportunity and possibility to expand your thinking, your knowing, your understanding about what it means to be a contribution. And you have been that already. And your time at Pitt is going to create an opportunity for you to be even more of that moving forward. And as already named, we are in a particular context. 
And so, welcome to fall 2020. Welcome to a context like none other. Understanding that COVID-19 impacted the end of your high school year, impacted your summer before college, impacted your families, and along with that pandemic, certainly the 1619 pandemic of systemic racism continued to show its ugliness. In the murder of George Floyd, the killing of Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, and so many others named and unnamed, we know that we continue to have to do work to find the cure to systemic racism and other areas of oppression. So you return to school, you start school, you start your college career in mask. You start your college career having to wipe down and wash down and maybe not have the roommate that you thought you were going to be able to have. So it starts different. And you will get to tell the stories about the context in which you started your college career. All of us start in a given context. All of us start with things mattering. You have the opportunity to make the best of the context that you are starting in. But we don't wanna pretend like it's not a context that any of us have ever seen or experienced before. With that named, we want to just invite you to consider these reflective questions. And so you can put some things in the chat, you can just quietly reflect, or you can journal your responses to these statements. What was it like in your high school, hometown or community as it relates to diversity? Did you, were you homeschooled? Did you grow up in a rural community or an urban community? You can put these things in the chat if you'd like. What was it, what was it like? Was there lots of diversity? Was there no diversity? Um, what, what, what did that mean for you? What kind of diversity was there? We invite you just to be in that space. What was it like where you came from? No wrong place, no wrong way. Very white and affluent suburban community. Thank you, thank you. What else, what else was it like folks where you came from? Just go ahead and share it. There's no, this is just where I came from and it's what I'm bringing. What was it like in my hometown or community as it related to diversity? We'll take a couple of more, exclusive, all right? Not very diverse, okay? Not very diverse, very bland, right? White upper class, okay? My hometown was also very white and suburban. So again, very good folks. Just seeing, we went to a school by Wall Street, right? Not very diverse. Inclusive, very diverse. We got some inclusive and some very diverse. Very good, very good. How about this next question? What was your experience with issues of race or racism before coming to Pitt? You get a couple of responses to that. My experience with race or racism before I came to Pitt, what was it? Yeah. How do we talk about it? Did, did I have lots of diverse friends? None really, thank you. Okay, yeah. Didn't experience racism myself, but my friends did, okay, yes, all right. Yes, 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 yes. People assume my heritage because of my lighter toned skin. You all are doing great, right? Just, just paying attention to those things, right? What was it like before I even got here? What would I think about? How did I, you know, as I came through this summer with, you know, um, the racial unrest and uprising, how did I experience that? Was I, was I in conversations about it with my friends? Did my family talk about it? What, what was that like? Absolutely. Very good, just, just reflecting, journaling, chatting, just getting us thinking about, so what was it like in my hometown and community? How did I experience dynamics of race before I came? Think for a moment about this next one. I had a black girlfriend and some people thought racist jokes and uh, that would be funny, okay? Right, 
Thank you. Thanks, Martin, for sharing that. Absolutely. Just pay attention to all of those truths for yourselves. Let's consider this next one. So when you consider your own experience, think of a time when you really felt like you were a part of a community. Is there a time when you really felt like you were valued and respected in a community? That could have been in a softball team, that could have been in a choir or a drama club, could have been a religious or faith community, could have been really in your family, anywhere. And so if you think about those spaces where you really felt like you belong, share with us as a community. Yeah, my time in Boy Scouts, excellent. Yes, go ahead and just chat those in. When did you feel like you're in my theater group, a part of my high school group, my choir? Yes, that's right. Yes, exactly, exactly. On oh, my football team, very good folks, very good. Just naming what it, when I really felt like I was a part. Yes, excellent. Excellent. Now, here's what I want you to uh, chat in now. When you were a part of something, really felt like you belonged, what were the feelings? What were the feelings? How did you feel in those spaces? Just go ahead and put those in. How did I feel? Wholesome. Excellent. Excellent. Accepted. Yes. Happy. Safe. Relaxed. Fun. Very good. We got it. We got it. Felt, felt good being. Yes. Unity. Safe. Calm. Yes. Exactly. Exactly, beautiful, comfortable. Now I want you all to try to capture, pay attention to those things that are coming into the chat around what it felt like when I belonged, when I was connected. And we want you to be grounded in what our intention is here at the University of Pittsburgh. What would it be like if all of us felt those things every day? What would it be like? Just imagine if all of us felt warm, open, welcome, excited, um, felt um, like we could, like we belonged, uh, had a sense of a better world. Yes, yep, just imagine, right? What would I be able to do? Amazing, yes, absolutely. Stress-free, yes, yes, yes. When grounded in a sense of belonging, it's a lot harder to act inappropriately. Thank you, Martin, exactly, yes, out of character. Very good, it's harder to do that. Folks, you are doing beautifully. We are, we are rocking this virtual experience. I love it today. I love it. I'm so excited. What I want to say is that's our goal. Our intention is to create a learning environment and community where we can feel those things so that we can contribute to our fullest potential. That's what we're, now we're not trying to be, you know, kind of fake and unreal and Pollyannish um, in this um, experience that, you know, everybody's gonna like everybody, everybody's gonna sing songs together and hug. And while I like all of that, that's not what this is about. It is about though, us paying attention to creating intentional spaces of belonging. That that's our desire every day, that we don't want to come um, whether we come virtually or whether we're coming in person to interact with folks in a space that is intended to have an exclusionary experience. So that's what this is about. And we want you to think about and understand that that's our core value. And we hope that you share that core value with us. As we ask the question, was there a time where any of you could have felt like you were a part of a community and if your response to that was, that's never been the case for me. I've always felt excluded. I've never felt like I belonged. We want this place to be the difference maker. It is our intention for the University of Pittsburgh to be the space, to be the answer to that question for you from now on. That Pitt was the place you felt valued, respected, heard, a place that you could learn and to engage about yourself as well as others. With that name, folks, I want to keep us moving because I am getting excited. You all are doing so great. I feel like I'm in the stadium with the 4,500 of you all that I usually get to be at this time. But this way is actually giving me a whole nother level of access to all of your voices. Why do you think this program is a part of your welcome experience? Why is it a part of your orientation experience? Why do you think we're starting in this way? Why do you think this session would be 
too many of us lack diversity education, all right? To set expectations, you all, ah, excellent. Good level setting, yes. Inclusion is very important, yep. To make people feel welcome, you got it. All of this, all of it, to establish good common ground. <laughs> very, very good, absolutely. These are the reasons that we are starting in this way. Yes, we wanna set common ground. We wanna establish foundational norms and understandings. We wanna be able to be together um, and uh, recognize that many of us come with a lack of knowing and information. The other thing I wanna name, and I thank you for all that you put in the chat, is that the other major piece of this work, the reason that we are doing this is because of this truth. Primary responsibility and role of higher education is to prepare the next generation of leaders. The next generation of leaders will need to have the skills and the capacity to engage within, about, and across difference. You, in fact, the next generation of leaders are the product that the University of Pittsburgh is so proud of that we've admitted and so proud of that we will graduate. You will graduate and go into the world to make it a better place to lead in communities, to lead in organizations, to lead in government, to lead in politics. You will go and do that work in amazing ways. It is our responsibility to prepare you to do that well. And key skills that's needed for that are the capacity to engage and lead effectively within about and across difference. We cannot have you graduating from here not knowing that race matters. We can't have you graduating from here not understanding the difference in sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression. We cannot have you graduating from here not understanding your own religious, secular, or spiritual identity and how that informs the lens through which you see the world, through which you make policy, through which you teach, through which you operate. And so we are starting this experience not only because all of the things that you named matter in terms of creating a sense of belonging and welcoming, but it's also so that you can begin to build your diversity, equity, and inclusion and anti-racist muscles so that you can build the skills and the capacity for the next round. Now, some of us come having already worked out around some of that. And so maybe I worked out around some of that and I got some muscle um, uh, energy um, in that space. And so I, I show up pretty skilled around maybe the issues of race. Maybe I show up pretty skilled or pretty strong around issues of gender or religion or spiritual or secular identity. But I haven't done my legs yet. I haven't done my class yet. I haven't done my ability muscles yet. And so what this experience is an invitation to is a full body workout. That the time that you are here at the University of Pittsburgh, we hope that you get to build capacity, strengthen your muscles around engaging across and about and within diversity. With that, here's what we wanna offer you. We wanna just talk a little bit about what that means and what that looks like. So building an anti-racist, a diverse equity and inclusive community is a place where members, all members can feel be their authentic self. They don't have to hide anything. And that is not saying that you need to share all of your business, but you get to show up in your full self. How many of us remember and can think about in high school, um, parts of us that we didn't share, parts of us that we felt like we had to keep secret, not private, right? Um, because I want to just be private around that, but it's a secret, I have to keep it a secret because of how I might be treated or experienced or what might happen. Members are willing to learn about themselves across uh, difference through conflict and discomfort. And so one of the key things about found the foundation of learning community is that it's not always going to feel good. Sometimes it might feel a little bit uncomfortable. Now, what we're committed to here is creating an environment where it, where it is comfortable for you to deal with your discomfort. But we're not saying that it is always going to be comfortable. 
we do want it to be a safe space so that you can show up in bravery, right? So it shouldn't feel like a space where you're gonna be done harm, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a space that's going to feel comfortable or easy, but it'll be worth it. Members are committed to creating an environment where all members are physically, psychologically, and emotionally safe. All members are physically, psychologically, and emotionally safe. That's, these are core values to creating a learning community. Members build relationships and cultivate an environment of trust and commitment to an anti-racist and socially just campus community. So we're building relationships because we're hanging in there with each other through the tough moments so that we can build a more anti-racist and socially just campus community. And then finally, that we embrace this opportunity of learning and have some fun. It is not our desire or our thoughts that the conversations around diversity, equity, and inclusion, and anti-racism are about doom and gloom. These conversations are not about um, err or creating spaces of, of challenge. They might not always feel comfortable, but we're hoping that we will create environments where folks get to feel, um, embrace the learning, and also have some fun doing it. I'm hoping many of you are having fun as you begin to build your capacities within, about, and across difference. And so I want you to think about for a moment um, what it takes. And I wanna just offer these four things. It's awareness, knowledge, skills, and action. Awareness, knowledge, skills, and action. We're hoping that you will, in this experience, develop some awareness of who you are, what you're carrying about yourself as well as others, and how that impacts your relationships. What's the knowledge you have about um, particular identities? What's the, what do you understand about the history? What do you understand about the future, present dynamics needed? And the skills that we hope that you will develop through your engagement, whether virtually or in person, are, Paying attention, noticing, noticing yourself, noticing your reactions, listening, sharing, being willing to be vulnerable, hum humility. So part of the thing that had to happen for me, I know, was that I had to get humble and realize that I didn't know all that I thought I knew. I had to be willing to admit when I didn't know something. And then developing the skills to intervene, to not just be a bystander. And that will take courage so that we, our actions create greater inclusion. I say all of those things. And the other piece I wanna say as you look at this diagram on the side is that we must do all of that through what I refer to as the big eight. And what I mean here is our identities matter. We could talk about lots of different ways that we show up. So different music, different style, different favorite foods. We saw different favorite summer uh, treats. All of those things are a part of our diversity, different mindsets, different ways of thinking, different ways of entering, night people, day people, all of that's diversity. And for the purpose of this conversation, we wanna invite you into owning our identities and our social identities matter. And, and so what we want to invite us into a committed conversation around is how race, class, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, religious, spiritual belief, practice, age, nationality, and ability, how all of those identities matter, and that we might have some others to specify. But why we wanna focus on those for just a moment is I want to invite you to consider all eight of those areas and more, but primarily those eight for this moment are areas in which there's inequity, there's injustice, there is history of those dynamics. And because of our commitment to create more equity and inclusion, we must be willing to own our part. I wanna start us with, given our context, the importance of doing our work around race. And so while I believe that everything there matters and everything is important, there is no hierarchy, I want you to recognize that given our current context, we can't do the work 
particularly in the context of the US, if we're not willing to engage race. Take a deep breath. I've shared a lot. And here's where I want you to go. You've got another opportunity to respond to poll. And so what I want you to do is just go ahead and type in, my experience with conversations about race and racism have been, go ahead and respond to what they've been. Enlightening, mm -hmm. primarily with friends. Good, you're doing great. Frustrating, mm -hmm. just go ahead and tie them in. We'll just take a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Primarily online, okay. One-sided, okay. Good, good, good. Let's see what all of this means. Yes, it's unproductive, right? Difficult, so some folks are putting it in the chat. Yes, both of them, all of it, all, all of it's good. Wherever you're chiming in, just put awkward. Yes, productive, okay. Educational, challenging, eye-opening, online, okay. All right, just notice, noticing. Just noticing what your experience has been. And so as we move into this semester, as we move into our start together, I want us just to pay attention to, so heated, right? Pay attention to what it's been like to be in these conversations. What energy am I bringing? So if I'm in a class and issues of race come up, how do I feel moving into that? Do I feel um, like it's gonna be eye-opening so I'm willing to move into it? Um, is it minimal so I don't have the practice in doing it? Um, is it saddening so I don't wanna go there because it's not been really good? Just pay attention. There's no wrong. And as we said, being in these conversations, we must be willing, building community, building capacity, we must be willing to move into it and through it with conflict and discomfort as a part of our growth. Wonderful folks, wonderful. And so I wanna move us now into our next experience. I wanna start with saying a little bit about me. So, because what I'm about to invite you to do is to bring yourself to the experience. So I was born and raised in Philadelphia with Southern roots. So my grandparents are from Philly. I spent every summer in South Carolina. I now live in Baltimore. I was the only boy child born during my generation. So I have no boy cousins. I'm the last male Washington. I identify as black and as African-American. Both of those work for me. I identify as cis male, cisgender male. I was raised working class. Um, I'm the only one in my family to have graduated from high school. I now live in an upper middle class space. I was raised in a Methodist, Baptist, and Pentecostal space, right? I now um, serve as a non-denominational pastor and religion is central in my life. I'm a first generation uh, college student. My, my dad didn't finish high school, my mom did. I'm a baby boomer, so um, you get to figure out what that means. Um, I'm an adult child of an alcoholic. And I came out as gay at age 13. Take a deep breath. All of my identities matter, this and more. What I'm inviting you into right now is just to pay attention to who you are. Pay attention to what you're bringing as you enter the University of Pittsburgh. We're about to participate in an activity that's going to allow you to reflect and share who you are and how you got here. To begin owning parts of your identity, which you may be conscious of or may not, and to begin to build a foundation for a stronger, more inclusive uh, pit community through practicing the skills of sharing yourself, noticing your community, and deciding to be vulnerable and courageous. Here's what that's going to look like. This experience should be done in complete silence. So I'm inviting you to use headphones or enter a private space if possible. I will make a statement. It will be displayed in the poll everywhere platform. You will have the option to choose true or false or multiple choice responses. I will invite you to notice the results. I will do a countdown. 
I will say thank you and then I will move on to the next opportunity. Folks, only share what you wanna share. All responses are anonymous. Participate at the level which you feel comfortable. So at any point as you're moving through this, if something pops up on the screen, a poll that you do not wish to respond to, you do not have to respond. I do invite you though to ask yourself, why didn't I want the group to know this part of me? Why didn't I want? And while they wouldn't know me, why didn't I want to share that to be a part of the collective truth? No judgment, it's a part of developing your capacity to engage within, about, and across difference. Some statements may trigger deep feelings, emotions, or memories. Again, as was named earlier, there is support to help you move through and talk through any of that. And then we ask you to consider how each of these statements will inform and impact your experience as a part of the Panther family. So, Get into a quiet, reflective space, get your devices and be prepared. Each poll will be about 15 to 20 seconds and then we'll move on. Who are we as a community? Who am I as an individual? Take deep breaths together and here we go. The poll will take a moment to launch and then, very good. I was born, I was born and raised in the US. I was born and raised in a country other than the US. I was born in one place, raised in another. I identify as an immigrant. I have a family member or close friend who is undocumented. Yeah. Nice, thank you. Let's notice. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I was born and raised in the United States on the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, Southwest, or none of the above. Yes, a lot of East Coasters. There we go. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. My first language is other than English. Notice, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I speak more than one language fluently. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as a first generation college student. Notice four, three, Two, one. Thank you. Family education. One or more of my parents or guardians have an advanced degree. One or more of my parents, my grandparents have a grand college degree. My parents or guardians completed high school or received the GED as their highest education. My parents or guardian did not, do not have a high school diploma. 
notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. My class background. I was raised in what I would consider a middle class family, an upper middle class family, an owning class family, a working class family, poverty or a poor family, mixed experience. I'm not sure. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I was raised in a single parent household. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. My parents are divorced. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I was raised in foster care, group homes, or as a ward of the state. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. Take a deep breath. You all are doing great. I am adopted. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. Sorry. Military status. I grew up in a military family. Someone in my immediate family is now serving in the military has served or is now serving. I am a veteran, none of the above. Notice, thank you. My experience with the criminal justice system. Someone in my family is currently incarcerated I have been arrested. Someone in my family is a part of the police force as a police officer. I plan to be a police officer, none of the above. Notice, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify politically conservative, liberal, moderate, radical, or I don't do politics. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I'm gonna ask you to take a deep breath. I'm noticing that there are some hands being raised. If um, Linda or someone can see if, uh, what those hands are, uh, 
I appreciate that. And I'm gonna ask you if you can just hold your questions and keep breathing through the end of the exercise. If there's something that shows up that doesn't make sense to you, or, or if there's something that shows up that you're not clear about, it's okay. Where, wherever you are, just whatever, whatever answer shows up for you, right? All right, whatever is real for you, thank you. Next. I identify as Jewish. Notice, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as Muslim. Notice, four, three, two, one. Thank you. We're having a little technical difficulty. Things have just frozen. Give me a second. I identify as Buddhist. Notice, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as Hindu. Notice, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as Wiccan or Pagan. Notice, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as Christian, Protestant, or Catholic. Notice, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as Mormon or LDS, Jehovah's Witness, Baha'i, religious scientist, or none of the above. Notice, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as agnostic, atheist, or none of the above. Notice, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify with a religious, spiritual, or secular practice not yet named. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as Asian, Asian American, Pacific Islander, Desi, Southeast Asian, Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean, Filipino, 
Hmong American of Asian descent. Notice. Thank you. I identify as Native American, American Indian, First Peoples, Indigenous person. Notice, four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as Arab, Persian, or Middle Eastern American. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as Latino, Latina, Latinx, Chicano, Chicana, Hispanic, Mexican American, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Dominican, Salvadorian of Latin descent. Notice. Thank you. You're doing great, folks. I identify as Black, African, African American, African Caribbean, West Indian of African descent. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as mixed race, multiracial, or biracial. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as white, Caucasian, European American, or of European descent. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I don't identify racially, I identify ethnically. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I struggle with my racial identity. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I am currently in an interracial relationship. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. Someone in my immediate family is living with a disability, physical, psychological, emotional. Thank you. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you.
I am living with a disability. Physical, psychological, emotional learning. Notice four, three, two, one. Thank you. Someone in my immediate family identifies as transgender, non binary, lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer, pansexual, or asexual. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as transgender, gender variant, non binary, gender queer, gender non conforming, female, male, none of the above. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. Take deep breaths. You're doing great. Just a few more folks. Who am I? Who are we? I identify as queer, lesbian, gay, bisexual, pansexual, or asexual. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I have struggled with issues of size and appearance and or body image. Notice four, three, two, one. Excellent. Thank you. I'm worried about balancing academic and social life. I struggle with asking for help. I'm worried about finances. I'm not sure that I can cut it here academically. None of the above. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I grew up in a family where alcohol and or other drugs were abused. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as a recovering addict. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I grew up in a home where violence was present, physical, psychological, and or emotional. No 
notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I identify as a survivor of sexual assault or incest. Notice four, three, Two, one, thank you. Folks, I'm gonna back up to the last question to see if it's unfrozen. It may have frozen for us. Let me just try one more time. I grew up in a family where violence was present, psychological, emotional, or physical. Notice, thank you. Take a deep breath. Thank you. I have experienced the death of a parent, sibling, or guardian. I have experienced the death of a parent, sibling, or guardian. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. You're doing great. I know people within my age group who have attempted or completed suicide. Notice. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. I have attempted suicide or other forms of self-harm. Notice. Thank you. Take a deep breath. There were times during this activity that I could have chosen to respond, but did not because, that I chose not to respond, but I did not because I was not ready to share that level of truth with this community. There were times that I could have, but I chose not because I wasn't quite ready yet to do that. Notice, thank you. I am open to engaging further in conversations about the things that I did share during this experience. I am open to staying engaged or being in conversations about the things that I did share during this experience. Notice. Take deep breaths. Four, three, two, one. Thank you. Take a deep breath, folks. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot say thank you enough 
for what you just allowed yourself to be a part of. I know, I know that I invited you into spaces about your experience, about your identity, about your experience, about your identity, about your experiences and your identities. That some of which you thought a lot about and some of which you may not have. And all of those experiences really do inform what we bring to the space. So I just want you to go ahead and chat in. I leave this experience feeling. Having had this experience, I'm feeling what? Calm, open, vulnerable. Yeah, calm, better, relieved, introspective, puzzled. Yeah, free, confused, beautiful folks, open and calm. But in calm has the most responses so far. Anxious, hungry, hungry, wanting more, honest, alone. Wow, surprised, yeah, yeah, beautiful. Just pay attention to your words. What are you feeling after the experience? Informed, enlightened, hungry, vulnerable, calm, same, shocked, included, heard, better, tired, intrigued, understood, exposed. Yeah, all of it, all of it, thank you. There's no wrong in this. And we invite you just to pay attention to opportunities that will be coming forward to exactly, to invite you into using your voice to engage, to talk about this, to talk about what this means. Um, introspective, why I felt calm, why I feel enlightened, why I feel comfortable, why I feel ready or at peace, why I feel um, uh, refreshed, why I feel all of the things that I'm seeing, humbled, Yes, yes, anxious, bored, anything. What, 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 why, why do I feel bored, right? right? No wrong, what's, what's, what's up for you as you consider your own feelings after having been in this experience? What's your boredom about? What's your surprise about? What's your rawness about, right? Okay, what's, what's all of that about for you? This is a part of developing your capacity to engage within, about, and across difference. Who am I, who are we, and how does this all matter? Beautifully done, beautifully done. So this activity invites you. We want you to consider what were your feelings and thoughts or reactions. You can reflect and chat or journal any of that in. Was there something that you wished was included that was left out? By, by no means was all of this um, intended to be about everything, that you could put everything down. But it was intended to invite us into some things. And so if there were some things that feel important to you that didn't get mentioned, how do I talk about that? How do I bring that part of myself to the University of Pittsburgh? And which of these identities or experiences do I think will have or has had the greatest impact on my journey here at Pittsburgh and why? Right, what in fact do I think matters as I get up in the morning will matter as I move into my classrooms, as I move into whether they're virtual spaces or, or uh, in-person spaces, as I, if I move through the dining halls, as I move through the towns, to the area, what do I think of my identities will matter most? Just reflect, journal and Go ahead and chat those things in. Folks, the intention of the experience was to create an opportunity for you to engage both your head and your heart. This work around diversity, equity, and inclusion, creating an anti-racist space is more than just a feeling place. It's more than just a thinking place. We have to be in both our head and our heart, what's our cognitive and our affective knowing. We want you to practice authenticity and being vulnerable. It is important that you show up, that you share, that you get real, that you get honest, that you get vulnerable, that you reflect on your own identities and what in fact they mean. How do they matter, right? Um, and how are they coming in with me and how are they informing my relationships and my analysis and how I move forward? That's just beginning of doing the muscle workout, the warm up. That's what this was laying the foundation, getting you to see 
who is in the community and to break down isolations. Our hope is that in this experience, you began to see, wow, I'm not the only one, or maybe there are a few of me, but I'm not by myself, right? Um, so to break down the isolation, it's a very important thing for belonging and being in community. And then I invite you to seek out others. And this is just of your class. And certainly there are sophomores, juniors, and seniors who are also represented, who could also have done this experience and you would see more. To develop the skills of reflection, self-reflection, and begin to develop the language for real conversations. So maybe some of us um, didn't know some of the words or some things felt like they were left out and uh, language and developing the skills to ask myself questions as well as then to be in discussion with others and to consider your role in helping to create a more inclusive and anti-racist campus community. We hope that through this experience, you begin to think about, wow, I didn't ever think about that. Wow, I didn't even realize that about myself. What is it that I can do to make sure that we're creating greater inclusion? With that name, folks, as we're moving toward our end, I wanna invite you to pay attention to what you see. Does everybody see the duck and the bunny? I'm hoping that you can see the duck and the bunny, right? Sometimes in these conversations, folks will say, this is a duck. No, it's a bunny. No, it's a duck. No, it's just a bunny. And so maybe even for some of us watching now, it's like, where he see a bunny at? Where he see a duck at? I only see one or the other. And what we invite during this journey is that you recognize that we must move beyond either or thinking and invite ourselves into the knowing that there are multiple perspectives that are present in the same space. And we learn best when we're able to hold all perspectives, multiple truths, and to value those truths as real, to recognize that maybe what we're seeing is simply from where we sit and that's not a wrong place, but it's not the only place. So move beyond either or thinking. Folks, you've done amazing today. And I want you to think about what as a result of our time together, how will you socialize and be present responsibly? What are you willing to stop, start or continue to build a more inclusive pit community. So as we close, you get to, in order to build a more inclusive pit community, I commit to. Let's just, let's just storm it up. What do we commit to? Just go ahead and put them in, keeping an open mind. That's right. You can put them in the chat too. Um, Grizz, yes. Confronting racism. Yes. Yes. Yes, educate myself, they educate myself. Yes, that's right. What do I commit to? Listening to others. That's right, good, good job, good job. What am I committing to? Nothing happens unless we do something, learn. I'm committing to kindness, that's right, to learn more. What do you commit to? Yes, being open by respecting and listening to others, creating spaces like these, yes, exactly. Commit to wearing my mask and embracing curiosity, beautiful. Patience, yes, considering all ideas, education, listening, committing. This is commitment, commitment, being more open to discussion, being more open to discussion, being more open. Someone is committed to transfer. We appreciate, we appreciate what's your truth, what's your truth, and you get to get what's under that. Why am I committing to transfer? What does that mean for me, all right? What, what about this doesn't fit for me, right? That's a part of preparing the next generation of leaders to get clear. Right? To be able to hear different perspectives and why. Accepting all, loving all people. All of it is good. Being more open to uncomfortability. Yes, that's it. Yes, it's only day three and I love it here. Very good, very good. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Just stay in your space of commitment. What are you committed to doing? Take this energy, commit to being anti-racist. Just take this energy with you as we leave. And my final ask of you is to remember that your vote counts. We are in a particular moment. The next generation of leaders 
will get to make a difference in our country, in our world, as you make your vote count. Folks, when I was in your seats again many years ago, it was my commitment to end racism. I was gonna end it before I finished undergraduate school. Oh well, so much for that one. Um, and then I left here and I went to graduate school and I discovered that there was sexism. I didn't know that there was actually systemic ways in which there was bias against women. I didn't necessarily know and understand that. I thought all I needed to do was just treat all women nicely and kindly, just like I thought about around race. But what I learned is that it's more than my individual treatment. We have to be willing to engage systemic dynamics of oppression and exclusion. And the next generation of leaders will need to move beyond their individual level to address the systems of exclusion to create a more just world. One of the ways you do that is to make sure that you get out and vote. I believe you can do that. I believe you can make Pitt the place you want it to be. I hope you will make the decision to do just that. Hail to Pitt and have a great year. You're on mute, Linda, you're on mute. Thank you, Dr. Washington. See, I'm still learning after all these months, but again, but everyone's sending their thank yous in the chat and giving you a round of applause for your great presentation. Dr. Washington has been with us now almost seven or eight years, I believe he's been coming to Pitt and this will tell you, this is the first time that we've had to do it um, virtually, but I want to say he did not miss a beat. You, you know, there's some things of course we weren't able to do but the, the way he um, delivered this information had, was just as powerful here as he has done when we've been in the peak with all 4,000 students. And so, um, so thank you so much, Dr. Washington. We have time for just a couple of questions. If you do have a burning question for Dr. Washington, he's, he's willing to answer a couple of questions before we let him go on his way for the afternoon. I wanna thank you all so very much. So pop it into the question and answer if you have a question that you'd like to ask Dr. Washington while he's still with us. Um, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Cudd. I would like to thank Dr. Dean Bonner, Dr. Bonner, uh, for their support of this event as always. I would like to thank uh, Brianne and Mike for their continued to um, just work hard, work on Welcome Week and making sure that you're having great experiences, even in a virtual, in, in a virtual way. And so we, we want you to remember all the things that Dr. Washington said as we enter into this new phase of your journey in life. You know, um, we, we, we celebrate, I love seeing all the identities that were that were um, celebrated out there. We embrace, want you to embrace and celebrate those identities, but then also how can you grow from those identities as well and make this world a better place? So I see one question that we have in the chat and the question to answer. Um, oh, Dr. Washington, they wanna know, can you run for president? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I that. Yes, love I you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, look, I, look exactly. I believe it's, I'm gonna stay in my lane. I'm gonna stay in my, <laughs> I believe many, I, we probably got a president amongst us right there. Look, they, they, y'all in the chat, Dr. President. Washington, 2020, exactly. <laughs> I agree, I agree, everyone. I have known him for so, so many years. I appreciate years, that. And That's I would so agree affirming. Thank you. that right there. Um, but Dr. Washington, if you do, we encourage you as you go throughout this week, um, you. if you wanna continue these conversations, <laughs> definitely check in with our new student programs <laughs> office, Cross-Cultural Leadership Development on the sixth floor of the William Pitt Union. Uh, they're going to be offering programs. New student programs are going to be offering programs. Uh, many of our groups are going to be offered. We invite you to go to our activities fair where you will get an opportunity to meet a number of our cultural groups at that time um, and that you'd be able to be a part of as well. So we invite you to do that. How can we make educating people on racism, social justice more effective when there is so much misinformation and people mm -hmm. go home to parents that hold racist ideas? Sure. That's a sure. great question. Yeah, how can we make it more effective, right? And so one of the things that I have found in my own journey, folks, and I really appreciate that question, is that I um, recognize that all of us were born in a context where many of us did not get accurate or complete information. 
right? And so, yes, it, it, you know, it's hard to know, you know, all right, so is this accurate? Is that accurate? And so on and so forth, right? And so, yes, we've got to check multiple sources. We've got to do all of that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but what, what's, uh, what I find is important as information in and of itself isn't the thing. So knowledge, there's lots of knowledge out there. There's lots of great research out there about the work. It's also about what we believe and what we feel and what we choose to believe, what we hold on to. And so do I believe um, that um, anti-blackness is a real thing? Do I believe that systemic racism is a real thing? Do I believe the data that talks about redlining and the history and the residual impact of those things around race or gender or sexual orientation, any of it? Do I believe the information Right. Do I believe the stories, the voices of particularly minoritized folks, right, when um, they say something? And if I don't, why don't I? What's my investment in um, holding on to whatever the truth is that I hold on to? And so as you are engaging with your parents or friends or other people who don't believe that race really matters or that racism is real, um, I invite you to share with them why you do right? Share your journey, right? How did you come to know and understand what you know and understand? And do that without judgment, right? You get to seek to understand why they believe what they believe, how they came to understand and why they hold on to that. And as we really seek to move the needle around anti-oppression, around anti-racism, we must be willing to know that if we're to stay in dialogue, we have to not feel like the conversation didn't matter if we didn't get them to our side, right? Um, so uh, hopefully you listen in the same way you want them to listen. So you get to see what you might be missing or what perspective that they might have off that you need to clear up and that you're spending time listening asking good questions and not simply telling them that they're wrong. That's the way to begin the work, to create institutional and organizational and cultural change. Most change only happens in the space where people feel heard. You want to hear, you want to feel heard, but keep up the good fight, keep it up. And the last thing I wanna say is, don't hate on your parents because they say some stuff that ain't in line with what you know. Know that most of us was born babies. Last I checked, anybody here not born a baby? And then big people come along and they start putting stuff in you, right? And if you don't have the opportunity and the experience to be in the spaces of learning, then you're probably likely to continue to operate out of the same stuff you was taught. So show up as a good teacher so you can help them to learn. People don't generally learn when you're judging them. So share your journey, be a good, um, be a good person that helps folks to be heard. And I believe that that'll make a difference. Thanks a lot. Jamie, that was fantastic. Um, I, we do have one, I make you, but I wanna say this, we have a number of questions around connecting with Dr. Washington and does he have a, a, a place you can follow him. Yes, he has all of the all the, all the means, the Instagram, the Facebook, all the, all that. Um, but I will say one of the things that we typically did with this program is that we would have a luncheon after Dr. Washington we would. for those who want to go into a deeper conversation. Because we have come in this fashion this year, we are inviting Dr. Washington back soon to campus. Um, if he's not in person, if we still going to be, if we still have to be virtual, he'll come in a virtual capacity to us for those who want to go deeper into this conversation. So we weren't able to do it in this um, time because of the situation that we find ourselves in. But hopefully maybe, um, we not hopefully, we will bring Dr. Washington back so that you can join him again in further conversation. It was always very powerful that luncheon and we got a chance to just have some other staff and faculty join us for that. And so we're gonna do that again and we will do that very soon, invite Dr. Washington back. Dr. Washington, the close out, one other person asked a question. Okay. How are you balancing being in the church mm. and identifying as a gay male? And if they're having a similar experience, how do they navigate mm. that? And mm. this will be the final question um, of today. But I do invite you all, as Dr. Washington concludes that question, to make sure that you look for ways where you can continue to grow 
and embrace uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion on our campus through the organization and the program that we offer. There are going to be many more coming. So this is not the only one. But Dr. Wash, I'll let you answer that question and then we'll wrap up. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it again. What a powerful question. And for those um, who might want to explore that um, space more deeply, I welcome the opportunities to do that. You can connect with me through, again, Facebook. You can connect with me through Twitter, and I can recommend resources to you. What I want to say is, again, as we talk about the things that get poured into us and put in us, when I sat in your seat back in 1978, I had the same question, how do I navigate being authentically who I am um, as a same gender loving as a gay person and also being authentically who I am as a Christian? Right. Those were two salient, very important identities to me. And some of the messages that I got is that you can't be both of those. And so I struggled a lot to really try to reconcile what that means for me. And I recognize that there's no way in three minutes that I can move through all of how I came to settle in the truth that I operate and live in today. But what I do know is that now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, the greatest of these is love. And so at the end of the day, love wins the day. And so I show up loving myself. I show up loving God's people, all of us, whether we identify as Christians or not. And I show up loving the divine, that super powerful energy that is created for all of us in the world. And so that energy holds all of us in the beauty of our creation. And, uh, and so the authenticity is what wins the day. Truth is what wins the day. Love is what wins the day. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You all are giving me so much to be thankful for at this moment. And so have a great 2020 and the rest of your career here at Pitt. Hail Pitt. Thank you, Dr. Washington. You're right, love wins every time. And that is that is it right there. I agree with you. I support that. Um, and my heart is full. I, and as I look at the chat, I was also following the YouTube chat and this chat. I like you, I'm very inspired about this class that is coming mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Um, I'm excited, class of 2024. You are about to do some amazing things That's at Pitt. Right. It may have started, it. It's, it, you know, I always say it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And you may have started in a different way, but I know you're going to finish strong. And so we look forward to working with you here at the University of Pittsburgh. Again, thank you for your time, your attention, your engagement, all of that on this morning. Continue to follow us on Welcome Week. Um, continue to engage in the activities. Continue to create ways to get to know one another. I love the group chats, the the, the, the pod chats, all of the things all that we're it, doing to it. find space to create and to connect with one another. Please, please continue to do that. We are so appreciative of you. Have a fantastic remainder of your day. We're going to put up a slide at the end. Remember, you can get OCC credit for attending this event today. We'll put up a slide to show you how. Again, Dr. Cut, thank you for sticking with us this entire time and all of my team on your hard work. And I'm looking forward to a, rest, a great remainder of the day. Have a fantastic, fantastic beginning of the year. Hail to Pitt. Bye, everybody.